Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Claudia Elbers, Planet X Research and Professional Physicist, and today I'd like to bring to you another one of my articles. This one is entitled The Neutron Star Impossibility. Now there are two main theories that explain the workings of the universe, which include such things as star formation and star evolution. There is the gravitational collapse theory and the electric theory. The gravitational theory basically ignores the fact that all matter is charged and that the electrostatic force is a lot stronger than the gravitational force. Whilst the electric theory uses the electromagnetism uh, to explain the different phenomenon we observe in the universe. Now here we have an illustration of, uh, this is a dwarf star, this is a subgiant star, and this is a red giant star. And this is what happens when uh, stars start to age. Uh, they grow in size uh, from a dwarf star. This would be the size of the sun to a subgiant to a red giant phase. So um, neutron stars were invented to explain the phenomenon of pulsars. And so from the gravitational, and this is from the gravitational collapse point of view. And a pulsar is a pulsating star that emits a beam of radiation. The name pulsar is short for rotating radio wave because when the first of these stars were discovered, the radiation they were emitting was radio waves. However, since then, pulsars have been discovered that emit visible light, X-rays, and gamma radiation. Now, according to the gravitational collapse theory, a neutron star is what remains of a large star with a mass between 10 and 29 times the mass of the Sun once it reaches the end of its life. Uh, the star reaches the end of its life when it runs out of fuel for thermonuclear reactions. At least that is the accepted theory. I believe that it has more to do with its electric potential energy, but this is the accepted theory. So all stars, according to this theory, start out burning hydrogen in fusion reactions, but as the star runs out of hydrogen in the core, it starts burning hydrogen in an outer spherical shell surrounding the core, which is made up of helium. This process causes the star to grow in size, going through a subgiant phase and a red giant phase. So that's what we saw here in this image. You can see how huge a star can become when that happens. Um, so this, this process, the star will grow uh, to a huge size. Our, saw, our sun, remember, is a dwarf star. If the star uh, has at least half of the mass of the Sun, it is supposed to be able to fuse helium in the core, while small masses start are also able to fuse heavier elements in concentric spherical shells around the core, whilst the products of the fusion reaction accumulates in the core. Um, now, when the star is no longer able to have thermonuclear reactions, the core, according to uh, the gravitational uh, collapse theory, uh, the core collapses and the outer layers of the star are expelled as a cloud of gas called planetary nebulae. Um, if the star has a mass of at least 10 times the mass of the Sun, it will have an iron core at this stage and the process of shedding its outer layers is an explosive one, uh, explosive one which means it will um, it's what's called a supernova. The iron core then collapses to the point that electrons and protons fuse into neutrons and the star becomes a neutron star. Now this star is expected to have a mass of between 1.4 and 5 times the mass of the Sun. That's because the rest of the mass was expelled and became a cloud around the, the core of the star. But only um, but it will only have a radius which is between 10 and 20 kilometers. So it's tiny. And this is illustrated here. So it, if this is the sun, this would be the earth. The earth, um, well, the sun is 100 times the size of the earth. And this would be the neutron star 
it's just a little dot in comparison with the earth so the earth is between 300 and 600 times larger than a neutron star so the neutron star would just look like a little dot the sun is 109 times larger than the earth so this is the size comparison now if the neutron star is more massive than five times the mass of the earth uh, then it's supposed to collapse into a black hole a neutron star can explain the regular short period with which a pulsar emits radiation because conservation of angular momentum means that as the star's core collapses it gets smaller and the smaller it gets the faster it rotates since the neutron star is so dense that has and has such a small radius it is expected to rotate very very fast Thus, if it emits a continuous beam of radiation in a certain direction relative to its surface, and this is illustrated here, so there's a beam of radiation emitted by this a star, and here um, it's in two directions at 180 degrees to each other. So if it does this, um, it emits in a certain direction relative to it surface as it rotates the beam the beam will be in the earth's direction once at least for every rotational cycle which causes it to seem like a pulsed signal and this illustrate this is what we illustrate here so it's rotating and if the earth is here somewhere as it rotates eventually the beam uh, will be facing earth and we will see that pulse uh, the light and then it will go on, it will do another rotation, and then after another cycle it will once again face the Earth and we will see another pulse. Now, uh, neutron stars have a rotational period of between 1.4 milliseconds and 30 seconds. So this means that it will do one rotation in this the star that has a period of 1.4 milliseconds is then supposed to do one rotation in 1.4 milliseconds. But there's a problem with that, and that is that an X-ray pulsar called SAXJ1808.4-36 uh, was discovered in 1996 that has a period of 0 0.042 milliseconds, so a much shorter period. And this is a big problem, because we, if we assume that this is a neutron star with a minimum radius of 10 kilometers, we can calculate the tangential velocity of a particle in its surface from the standard equation, where the speed is 2 pi over the period times the radius of the star, and pi is the number 3.1416. Um, t, as I said, is the period. Then if we substitute 2 pi over t, the period is 4.2 times 10 to the minus 5 seconds times the radius of 10 kilometers, 10 to the 4 meters, we get 1.5 times 10 to the 9 meters per second. But the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, so this is 5 times larger than the speed of light, and this is not supposed to be possible. Because according to Einstein's special theory of relativity, nothing is supposed to move at speeds higher than the speed of light. Now, another problem with neutron stars is that nuclei with too many neutrons are unstable. So a neutron star is actually supposed to be unstable and basically bre break up and the neutrons to decay back into protons and electrons. So um, let's look at the other theory. In the electric theory for the universe, stars are formed through the set pinch effect. And this happens because of the fact that the universe is made up of plasma and there are currents flowing through the plasma. A current next to another current attracts each other according to Faraday's law. So they squeeze the plasma together. The electric field at that point increases and compresses blobs of plasma and blobs of plasma appear. Then the compressed blobs of plasma form spinning electrical charges, which first glow as dim red dwarf stars, then become blazing yellow stars, and eventually become stars producing brilliant ultraviolet arcs within them. 
and fusion will happen above the surface of the stars but not inside and according to this uh, theory supernovae are due to galactic discharges which cause the stars to blow up so pulsars or pulsating stars can easily be explained as a charge relaxation effect in this theory in other words charge built up builds up to a critical value in a star as it does in a capacitor and then the star discharges and this discharge causes a beam of radiation to be emitted and if charge builds up at a constant rate the charge will happen at the dis discharge will happen at regular time intervals and so there's no need for the star to spin or rotate very fast so its surface speed it does not have to go anywhere near the speed of light it can be quite slow so what explanation have astrophysicists come up with to explain the super fast rotating pulsar well they have gone deeper in what is theoretical theoretically possible but not verifiable. Neutron stars or even black holes are not verifiable. And um, so no one has sent a probe out to a neutron star to see whether it is really made up of neutrons. And um, but this is the explanation that the astrophysicists have uh, come up with. They just went beyond the neutron, which is supposedly, according to theory, made up of quarks. And so what um, we end up with is the breaking up of the neutron. So we end up with a star that is made up of quarks, the strange quark. And this is the way the theory goes. And this is according to quantum chromodynamics. Nucleons, which are protons and neutrons, are made up of three quarks. And we see them here. This is a proton and a neutron made up of three quarks. The proton, two up quarks and a down quark. And the neutron made up of two down quarks and one up quark. They have different charges. One third of the charge of the electron or two thirds of the charge of the electron. And so they would, you can build up the charge between the three to be uh, the charge of um, the proton, which is uh, exactly the same as the charge of the electron, except this uh, for the proton is positive, the electron is negative. Um, now, the quarks uh, have uh, a color charge, uh, which stays inside the nucleon. So um, these have to be of different colors. So we have to have a, a red, a blue, and a green. And then overall, the particle that they make up is said to be color neutral. In other words, um, the color charge just stays within uh, the proton itself. It's not seen outside. And um, so all stable nucleons have to be color neutral. And so the neutron also has the three different colors, so it's color neutral. So in this theory, under gravitational collapse, the star can go beyond the neutron stage and create what's called a quark-gluon plasma, which then leads to the production of strange quarks from collision into in the quark-gluon plasma. So basically, you combine an up quark with a W, um, boson and that uh, gives rise to a strange quark. Now the result is a star made up of strange quarks that can be less than two kilometers in radius which would then mean that it does not have a surface tangential speed greater than the speed of light. And this solves the problem until we find another star that has a period that's um, again even smaller and possibly the two kilometer radius will not be enough to get a surface speed that is not greater than the speed of light. I wonder what they will come up with next. But in conclusion, even though my training is in theoretical particle physics and the ideas of quantum chromodynamics 
or attractive to me, I realize that this is not the best way to deal with observations that do not fit the current gravitational collapse theory of star formation in evolution. I think the electric theory, even though it may not be completely correct, is a much better theory. Therefore, strange quark and neutron stars are not likely to exist. And if neutron stars do not exist, then uh, black holes do not exist either. So, it's however uh, possible that rejuvenated stellar cores in the solar system pulsate as they build up charge and then discharge, thus producing jet-like ejections and nova-type outbursts which have been observed in the inner solar system. This is Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X physicist. Thank you for watching.